Attention! Although my content is usually family-friendly and suitable for all ages, Phoenix Wright Justice for All is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB content rating system, and as such, the videos in this Let's Play may contain blood, mild violence, and or suggestive themes. So, viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back to Phoenix Wright Justice for All, everybody! We are continuing cross-examining Will Powers today in Farewell My Turnabout, because I couldn't find a better intro to do than that. <laughs> Anyhow, so... He he's, had to go to the bathroom! He had to go to the bathroom, we gotta know more about this. At what time was it? Oh, well, I don't remember. Great. The award ceremony ended around 8pm, right? And I went to Matt's room pretty soon after that, and then I came back, and then I went to the bathroom. So I guess maybe it was around 8-10pm oh, oh, yeah. okay. by that time? You're not one for details, are you, Mr. Powers? S sorry I thought I could maybe catch Matt and say my congrats. Yeah, I get you. That's when the bellboy he saw earlier came out of the room. Hi, Mr. Bellboy. Are you sure it was the same bellboy? How can you mistaken him? <laughs> yeah. And how could you tell? All the bellboys wear the same uniform, after all. But, you see... Well, he had those stitches in his face. Eh. So I'm sure it's the same guy that was talking with Matt. Hmm. So which room did the bellboy come out of? I wonder where he got those stitches. That would be a cool, like, <laughs> little thing. I don't really want to see a photo of his face sliced open, though. Well, me <laughs> either. I'm more like, I just want to hear, like, oh, like, I had this epic battle on him. Pirate ship, or like what? Yeah, something. What time period no! do you think this takes place? No, in? but this dude is involved in all sorts of crime. Not necessarily a pirate ship, but he could be like, oh, I, I was on like the Empire State Building in Japanifornia. <laughs> that that's there, and then I was like fell outside the building and got slight. I don't know. It could be like kind of interesting to hear. Okay. Story. I don't know. I don't know. I want to know where Matt Unger got those scars, even, oh, me even too. though it is implied at the end. By the end. Okay. I'm I'm guessing he either gave it to himself or it's like a childhood injury that he's just like, yeah, I fell off my bike. And <laughs> the victim's room, huh? Yeah, the one with all the really really pretty flowers and teddy bears. It was Juan's room, all right. Words cannot describe how screwed I am. Hmm. Let's continue with the testimony, shall we? Just give us the word, Maya's okay, and we will. Oh, man, will we prove him guilty? And then we'll just be like, Your Honor, he's obviously guilty. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Mr. Wright, I've never heard you say that before. Yeah, normally. That boy was out of place. <laughs> um, so what exactly was so out of place about him? Right, right, right. Why the insipid grin? Maybe because I have no idea what damaging thing he's going to say next? Um, well, the bellboy was empty-handed. Empty-handed? The bellboy was one of those room service people, right? But he wasn't pushing a cart and he wasn't holding a tray, either. You'd call that a little so strange too, wouldn't you? Yeah, even if you were picking up stuff, mm. it's, you would want a tray, so it's like, let me put your coke bottle on here, and then, like, carry it off. He wouldn't just, like, grab it. What if he, like, put the, left the tray in the room, though? That's a bad bellboy right there. Oh, excuse me, I forgot to pick up my tray. No, like, if he brought, like, a tray of food, he'd put the tray down and then walk out empty-handed, right? I don't know if he would. Granted, mm -hmm. if you had a whole tray of food, you'd probably want a cart to push it on. But right. maybe he's like, no, but, no okay, I like the but let's old say ways. It's tomato juice. It's probably tomato juice, because everybody likes tomato juice in Japanifornia. Like, <laughs> I don't think he would leave the tray if it's like, I have a tray with a bottle. He would just be like, here's your bottle. Take the tray back. Because it's Maybe. not like he's... And then he might come back with the tray to retrieve said okay. bottle. But I don't think he would leave the tray there. Because hmm. then he, they'd be short on trays everywhere he goes. I mean, in they the have first place... Plenty, I was about to say, in the first place, he's not even supposed to be there. So. Hmm, I agree that it is a bit strange, Mr. Powers. But is it really that unusual for a bellboy to be empty-handed? What should I do? Should I let Mr. Powers' testimony slide, or let it slide try to pull a fast one? Hmm, <laughs> we need to make as much time as possible. You're right. I think it's pretty unusual, too. I think it's weird. Oh, I thought you might think so! Hmm. Hm. There's no need to say anything when the defense gives up without a fight. Let's move on. Anyway, Mr. Powers, you thought the bellboy was a little suspicious, correct? Well... Yeah, he had to be the assassin, I'm sure of it. The music's being weird. 
it's yeah, kind of slow, but it's like being It's glitching out a little bit, I don't yeah. know why. Please don't be so quick to judge. Oh, but it's kind of a Powers Family theme. Think of every person as a thief. Well, I guess a thief and an assassin are both sneaky and silent. I kind of agree with that in a way. Because, like, if, for me, I always say, like, I expect the worst of people, so that way when they, like, surpass my expectations, I'm like, wow, that's great. But that I... way, if I think that they're a total, like, jerk, then I'm like, yup, all right. I don't know. If there's a fine balance, there's obviously. A balance. Don't I, expect I respect everybody, everybody that I meet until they give me a reason not to respect them, yes. but I don't yes. trust them. Yes, that's exactly it. That's not the point, Phoenix. In any case, if that bellboy was the assassin, it would be very bad for us. But he really is the assassin, you know? Yes, but you can't give in yet. If you want to prolong this trial for as long as possible, you're going to have to pull some cheap tricks on this one. Indeed. I was in the hall because of the bathroom! Okay, let's go back. I was about to yeah. say. I thought you made a safe state. I did, but I want to... Have okay. a save that we pressed everything. Okay. You call that a little strange. It's very strange. It is very strange. Let's try to pull a fast one. There is nothing strange or unusual about an empty handed bellboy. But there really, really is. There really, really isn't! <laughs> if you two are done being school children, bellboys offer room service, there is no reason them for, for them to ever be empty handed. Your Honor, I ask that the witness's previous statement be supplanted with this new one. Urgh, Edgeworth. Are you going to do whatever you can to make the bellboy look suspicious? That is his job! <laughs> I, I see. Very well. This court recognizes and grants the prosecution's request. Mr. Powers, if you could amend your testimony, please. Y yes sir I thought it was kind of strange for a bellboy to come out of a guest room empty-handed. <gasps> Alright. So you're saying that it's suspicious for him to be empty-handed? Yeah, really suspicious. I mean, when I first saw that bellboy... He's not empty-handed. He was holding a tray in his hand. Oh, okay. And there was a bottle of juice and a wine glass on it. Juice? What kind of juice was it? Um, I'm pretty sure it was tomato juice. If we could come up with some sort of reason as to why he would come out empty-handed, some sort of proof, then I think we can dodge the bullet for this one for now. Proof, huh? Sounds like another job for the court record. Some sort of proof that what? That it's not that there strange? Is a, that there was a non-suspicious reason for him to have come out empty-handed. Um, well, you mentioned he could have left the tray or something. Yeah. Or left the wine glass. No. Huh. Just look at the wine glass? It might just be that. I mean, we don't have any just like, it's this. Nothing suspicious about it. Are you sure? Oh, never mind, yeah. Yeah, he left the whole tray. He left the whole tray. Okay. Mr. Powers? Y yes Poor Mr. Powers. You're easily influenced by other people's words, aren't you? As soon as you heard that the bellboy might have been the killer, you got caught up in believing it must be true. But, but, isn't he really suspicious? He's got all those stitches and, and... Just because a person has stitches doesn't So? Mean... A baseball has stitches? Are you saying all baseballs are suspicious because they have stitches? Nope! <laughs> well, there's, there's also... I mean, what about him being empty-handed? I would like to ask the court to please take a look here. We literally <laughs> have, like, swapped positions with Edgeworth. <laughs> Basically, where he's like, no, this guy is definitely guilty. Like, we haven't... But we also were just like, um, what's a way to prove that this isn't a problem? Uh, th this, this! Well, we have to throw doubt onto it, basically, yeah. to pearl on the trial. This is the crime scene. There is a wine glass sitting next to Mr. Corrida's body. The liquid inside this glass is tomato juice. I think the wine glass also would have worked. Okay. And now, if you were to look at what is on top of the table in the lower right corner here... Anyone can clearly see that it is a tray with a bottle of tomato juice on it. The bellboy had just brought this to Mr. Corrida's room. He left the tray in the room, which is why he was empty-handed when he left. Yeah! But... that would mean that the bellboy had seen and left a dead body in the room. No. Ah, but can you prove that Mr. Corrida was already dead at that time? Also, uh, he could have just handed it to the dude at the door. That's also true. But Mr. Edgeworth! Yes? 
Oh, I blame you for leading me down this route! <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. What is with him? Why is he laughing? Witness, isn't there one more thing you would like to share with us? Uh, is there? The bellboy was empty-handed, or should I say empty-hand-id? I recall that you had something interesting to say about his hands. Oh yeah! I almost forgot! About his huh? hands? W what? Wasn't he wearing gloves? The bellboy! He was wearing gloves! <laughs> gloves? <laughs> You're just calling everything. It's like, wasn't he wearing gloves? What's weird? Yeah, pitch black leather ones. All the other bellboys don't wear gloves like that, right? Black leather gloves. Why didn't you mention them earlier? Sorry, it slipped my mind. Ah! Boy, does this make the bellboy look really suspicious. Alright, gotta focus. I can't get lax here. So what if he had gloves? A lot of bellboys wear gloves. They're not black gloves. Come on, Mr. Wright. That bellboy was wearing black leather ones. So, a football is made of leather. Are you saying all footballs are suspicious because they're made of leather? <laughs> cool. <laughs> I love how, like, that's, like, a, such a stupid argument, but Mr. Powers is always like, <laughs> Yeah, well, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that man, he received a large roll of cash from the defendant. And then he was seen leaving the crime scene wearing black leather gloves. I don't think that even someone like myself can believe he was just another bellboy. Ugh. It seems we have finally come to an understanding. Now then, witness, please continue with the rest of your testimony. The rest? Oh yes, please tell us more. Did you get very far? Did he have a car? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I still think it's dumb that, like, this could have been solved in one day if he had just been like, Hey, right, I saw this weirdo just hand, hand like, a roll of cash to this butler. Like, I, I don't know. I'm still hung up on, like, if he had just sent something. It probably slipped his mind because a lot of crazy stuff happened that night. Like, the True. bellboy gave him the transceiver. Yeah. Maya got kidnapped. Juan yeah. got killed. Right. But here's the deal. And I mean, again, he's not the brightest bulb, so to speak. But mm -hmm. if you have a crime happen, or multiple crimes happen in this case, I would just be like, here is literally everything I did tonight. I, this is when I went to get a drink of water. This is when we ate food. This is when the presentation ended. This is when we went over to here. This is when I went to use the bathroom. And then tell everything. I mean, some things you can't remember as well. Right. I feel like I would remember, like, oh man, that butler just got, like, a thousand right. dollars. I feel like that would become a meme. Like, hey, did you know if you could become a butler, you could pay really well? <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> okay, their second meeting. After leaving Juan's room, the bellboy went and knocked on Matt's door, just like that. He gave something to the person inside the room. Then the old guy just left without even going into the room. After that, I went to the bathroom and went back to my seat. Yeah! So the bellboy, after leaving the crime scene, next went to the defendant's room? That would be weird if there was a murder and you saw someone leaving the murderer's room- Not the murderer's room, the, Murder the victim's room. Yeah. Maybe Will Powers like, is like, oh, I don't want to get questioned by the police. That's true. He did, <laughs> he got arrested he did get arrested, that. arrested that one time. Ah, uh, yeah, but still. Why? Yeah. Yeah, I kind of saw all that by accident. Some accident? I'd say you saw too much. And all of it was suspicious to high heaven. Hmm. I think it's safe to say that we can no longer consider this bellboy to be normal. Now then, let's get started, shall we? Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Great. Their second meeting. Okay. Also, this is the cross-examination music, but I think it's sadder than the first one. This is the Presto music. What's or different? Or not Presto, Allegro. What's different? It's like a remix. Oh yeah, there's like slight beats in the background. And it gets more complicated as you Yeah, go on. it's more like the I I would compare it to like when you hear simple and clean sad versus <laughs> also, simple this and part clean remix. This part isn't in. That's not in the original cross examination music. It's not? No, no it's not. Is. Oh. Yeah, I would compare this to, like, Simple and Clean, the two different, yeah. three, four different versions. <laughs> is, is, two yeah. point, is it 2.8 or 2.9 that has, like, that remix with the, the I can't remember her name, the blue-haired girl? That would be 2.8. That's the, the, holding Aqua. the thing, and then Sora's like, ah, and, like, reaches in the water, <laughs> and she falls backwards. That would be 2.8, I it's believe. It's 2.8, okay. Because I remember hearing that music, and I was like, it's Simple and Clean remix. 
Oh, again! Yeah, they need more songs. They need more songs. Is that what you saw while you were busy spying? Uh, excuse me? I may be a poor, underpaid action star, but even I wouldn't stoop to spying! Yeah, that's old bag. Well, I think the point is, where did you watch all this from, Mr. Powers? Oh, um, from the door of the bathroom with my left eye, in a sort of sneaky spy like. <laughs> I KNEW HE WAS SPYING! To be fair, it probably seemed too dangerous to go out of the bathroom at that point. He, nobody knew the murder had happened at that point, though. No, but it, I would be like, there's this weirdo that just came out of here and I he just thought he was saw the bellboy, him, though. I just saw him get a roll of cash and he's got stitches on his face. Uh, maybe I'll just Don't like, be so I'm judgmental! <laughs> I'm sorry! I'm sorry. It's like all the things adding up. If there's some dude uh, with stitches, I'm not afraid of him. <laughs> Please, does it really matter if he was doing it over or underhandedly? What did the bellboy do next? That's all I care to know. He gave something to the person inside the room. I said, hold it! Um, okay. That's better. Ahem. <laughs> what kind of a statement is that? Please elaborate and give us a few more details. Oh, um, okay. Hmm. I should probably ask him only one question at a time. Ask about the person inside, ask about this something, don't ask anything. Person inside, because I have a feeling it may- The dude was snore in a way. It could be like, Miss mm -hmm. Andrews, this is the yeah. thing. I don't even know okay. what you're well, giving her. Let's do the stupid one first. I don't think I can find out much more from Mr. Powers. I should probably move on to a different topic. So what did the bellboy do after that? Alright, ask about the person inside. So, who took this something that the bellboy handed off? Um, actually, I don't know. I figured. What do you mean? I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. Well, was it bear, or was it a samurai? <laughs> only <laughs> an arm. Or ninja. Then you're saying you didn't see the person's face? Well, no, the victim was the ninja. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it was Mr. Ongard's room, correct? Oh, yeah. It could only have been Mr. Ongard himself, I'd say. And then, what did the bellboy do after that? Oh, so after he gave the person inside the room that thing, then the old guy just left without even going into the room. Where did this bellboy go after he left Mr. Ongard's room? To the bathroom. Hmm, he opened the door to Viola Hall, went in there, and who knows after that, right? <sighs> I do. After that, oh. I bet he handed um a device to Mr. Ongard that he could put in his the mouth. transceiver, the transceiver, oh. not like a transceiver, transceiver, but, but like a walkie-talkie or something like that. Yeah, so they could, like that so they could communicate. Good idea. Oh. Went back to the bathroom. But that would be bad if Miss Andrews answered the door like, "What do you need?" He's like, "Um, what please? do you need? <laughs> yeah. Tell me what you need." And just have him be like, "Please hand this to." Me. Mr. Ongar. <laughs> Way to make him sound like. <laughs> Head to uh, Mr. Ongar. Oh, <laughs> no, he's, he's like the hoity toity type of. What the butler. heck does hoity toity mean? I don't know! Our mom says that all the time. Po I'm post in the confused. comments what you think hoity toity means. Hoity toity. I think That's it's kind of like. H O I T Y. I think it's kind of like high and mighty. Like, better than everyone else. <laughs> yeah. Did you see anything strange, suspicious, or just out of the ordinary at that time? Oh yeah, I saw that one thing. What? He saw something else? <laughs> there was this jittery alien with a ray oh, gun. Oh yeah. It was watching Juan's door like some kind of stalker. Well? Um, I think we can forget about the alien. Well, Mr. Power's testimony just now was just as vague as his first. It's a little troublesome, isn't it? But I'm sure if you press him enough, everything will become clear. Although, that just makes it harder on us, doesn't it? Ugh, talk about a lose-lose situation. We do need to know more. Yeah. Well, if we don't know who it is, then we can ask about the something. Yeah. That's what I'm gonna do right now. Ask about the something. He gave something to this person? Yeah. And what was this something? <laughs> If I remembered what it was, I wouldn't be calling it a something, would I? Wow, you suck at remembering things. But this implies that something was removed from the scene of the crime. Are you sure you really can't remember, Mr. Powers? Um, 
I think it was something kind of small. I would like to summarize the testimony up to this point, if you don't mind. When the bellboy left the crime scene, he immediately went to the defendant's room. There, he handed a small item of some sort to the person inside. As for the person who received the item, all you could see was the person's arm. Oh, I have a wonder here. I wonder if the butler was like, it's gonna look like I did this. Somebody might have seen me. I'm gonna hand the button to Miss Andrews and try and pin it on Mr. Ongard. And then not be able, because you know he's asleep, not being do that, and then not being do that, I don't know what I'm saying. But then that, after that, like, it's pinned on him, and then he's like, and now I have a good situation to kidnap this girl. But here's the thing, a couple problems with that. One, Adrian herself has testified that she personally ripped the button off the guy, and also, the button had to have been ripped off after she went and stabbed him with the knife. Okay. Also, the, the killer wanted people to think that he did it. That's why he left his calling he card left his there. Card. Okay. He wanted people to be like, the killer killed this guy, and therefore on guard would be off the hook because nobody would suspect he did it. Oh. And it was because Aunt Miss Andrews took the card, like, just out of, like, uh, like she didn't think about it. That's why Aunt Matt got framed for it. Right. Yes, yes, it was just like that. Mr. Edgeworth, is all this really that important? Of course, Your Honor. I think this is of the utmost importance. This is when whatever was removed from the crime scene was handed over to the client. Hmm. Mr. Powers, please try to remember what it was the bellboy that handed off. Um, well, let's see. I think it was... Oh, no. If you remember, please add it to your testimony. D yes, sir. If I saw it again, I would say for sure, but I think it was some sort of wooden statue. I swear, if this is the Thinker, I'm gonna lose my mind. It's not the Thinker! Both of them are in police custody at this point. Not like that thing, but I'm saying like, oh, a little statue of the Thinker that he made of wood or something. Oh. A statue? Yeah, it kind of looked like one, I guess. If I saw the actual thing again, I'd probably remember, you know? Looks like for this trial to proceed... I'm going to have to come up with whatever this statue thing is and show it to him. You're going to have to trust your instincts on this one and take a chance, Phoenix. Well, Mr. Powers, let's continue with your testimony. Let's look at the court record. What did the bellboy do after that? Because... I need to see. What could it be? It's probably a piece of evidence you just forgot if we had. Oh. It could be the figurine. It could be... Oh, definitely could be. <laughs> what else would you think it could be? Um... Three whole pages of evidence. That thing. Uh, no, um, the... The stuff is way too that's big. That's way too big. That's what I was about to say. And also oh, it was the still picture. in... the picture. Maybe the picture. That's not a figurine, though. It's not a figurine. That's not a yeah, it has to be that thing, then. Objection! I think it's really weird that they have a bear with cuts in it. What was the point of that pregnant pause? Where did that objection come from? Well, speak up. Um, it was me, your honor. What is it, Phoenix? I have a feeling that something bad is going to happen once I show this. Mr. Wright, if you have something to say, please spit it out. Y yes, your honor. Okay, Phoenix, deep breath. Mr. Powers, the something you saw... Was it this item? Oh, hey, that's it! That's the something! Wow, Mr. Wright, you really figured it out! Hmm, I recall we found this at Matt Ongard's mansion. At the defendant's house? Oh, poor Mr. Powers looks scared in his complete orange outfit. Yeah. What does this mean? It's simple, Your Honor. Shelly DeKiller assassinated Juan Corita in his room. And then he stole this wooden bear from the scene of the crime. Then, the bear being found at Mr. Ongard's mansion would mean... It goes without saying, Your Honor. Mr. Matt Ongard is the killer's client. Order! 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 I said order! Mr. Wright, this is a most unfortunate turn of events for you. Yeah. Sorry, Mia. No, it's alright. Your judgment was sound. Actually, I figured the bear would come up. If not now, then it would have later on. Even if you hadn't shown it to the court, I'm sure your friend Mr. Edgeworth would have. 
Ah, I almost forgot that he knew about it, too. Hmm. So, that was the right thing to do? Yeah. Okay. I think it is clear that there is no need for us to continue this trial. I can't let this happen. I have to do something. There has to be something we're overlooked. Your Honor, a minute, please. Y yes, Mr. Wright? There are still a few points left that we have not fully explored. What are you trying to pull? Oh, well, we can't have that. All right, Mr. Wright, what questionable point would you like to explore further? Power's testimony, the person who received the bear, the bear itself. Bear itself. Why does that thing have cuts all over it? That is the thing we have to do, but... We sh Actually, I think we might have to do all of these. Mr. Power's testimony, of course. Huh? I know that my testimony was kind of shaky, but... Your insanity, or your inanity, stupefies me, Mr. Wright. We have already clarified all questionable points during the cross-examination just now. <clears throat> Wasting time like this, calling the testimony questionable? I'd say it's your head that's questionable here. Ah! Oh, oh, that actually penalizes us. I forgot about that. Yes, I agree. The cross-examination went smoothly and there was nothing wrong with the testimony. I wouldn't say nothing. <laughs> person who received the bear. There was one thing in Mr. Power's testimony that was very unclear. And that is the identity of the bear who was of the person who received the bear. The bear <laughs> the who received the bear. What's the identity of the bear? Is it a girl or a boy? Smokey the bear took the bear from Duke Killer. <laughs> <laughs> he gave something to the person inside the room. I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. As long as we don't know who it was that took the bear. We can't be sure of- ah! What is it, Mr. Powers? If you're going to scream like that, at least give us a good reason why. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Actually, so, I remembered. Um, I remembered who took the bear. Okay. What? Really? I mean, I only saw his arm, but, but, the arm. It was the Nickel Samurai's arm! Yeah, I swear it! Totally me. You've got to be kidding! Are you sure of that, Mr. Powers? Yeah, I'm sure it was the Nickel Samurai. Well, then here's what happened. He knocked on the door and was like, Oh, Mr. Oh, God, there you are. And Miss Andrews is still in her costume. He was like, It could have been, yeah. the bear. Tossed him in his room. Order! Order! It looks like you've dug your own grave yet again. How many times is that today? I've lost count. So the person who took in this little bear was the Nickel Samurai. And, as we all know, Matt Ongard is the Nickel Samurai. Thanks to the defense, we've made that all the clearer. What am I supposed to do now? Mia, help! You don't have time to act lost. You've got to find another angle to attack this from. Hurry! Now, I will bring this cross-examination to- Oh, at least we didn't get- Your Honor! Again, Mr. Wright, we actually have to do that, though. Yeah, okay. We've already removed any and all questionable areas of this testimony. It's about time you were removed from this court, Mr. Wright. I have to find something. Even one more little point will do. There are... There are still questions left unanswered. What are you trying to pull? Well, we can't have that. I think it's fairly obvious that the bear itself is very questionable. The bear, Mr. Wright? This was found at Mr. Ongard's mansion. However, Mr. Ongard was arrested at the hotel that night. Which means that since the murder occurred, he has not had a chance to go home. Oh. I think your honor has already figured out what I'm trying to say. It is not possible that it was Mr. Ongard who took this bear to his mansion. Why, that's very true! We didn't consider that point, Mr. Wright. There was no way, time-wise, for the defendant to have taken his bear home. Or to feed his cat. Phew! Disaster averted this- You haven't gotten the best of me yet, Mr. Wright. Well, we need some time, at least. Huh? I remember it clear as day. I remember what you muttered to yourself at Ongard's mansion. We have this area completely surrounded. There is no way for him to escape. I can't believe it. That butler, all this time, he was the killer. Uh, 
Yeah, we shouldn't have said that. <laughs> De Killer and Ongard were working together, so to speak. And De Killer was hiding at Ongard Mansion as its butler. W what a bold move. The bear figurine was brought back to Ongard Mansion by De Killer himself. Good thing he had the keys. When it looked like he was about to be arrested, Ongard had him do so. I assume because it would have been bad had the police found it during their investigation. I really like that picture, though. Yeah. Hmm. He looks like that dude from Cinderella. The Duke? With the, with the, yeah, the Duke. With the <laughs> monocle. The, if the Duke had stitches and was an assassin. <laughs> yes! No, I love that. I love that. The Duke is one of the best characters. And well, the king. And the king. The that, time has come! Uh, that, I, that's Alice in Wonderland. No, not that thing. But, no, <laughs> but, like, the time has come for my son to be married, and then they're, like, bouncing on the bed, hitting the chandelier, and then the oh, chandelier yeah. lands on the bed and breaks it. Yep. Well, Mr. Right, you've been quiet for a while now. Yeah, That's because that I was reminiscing about Cinderella. And, and I forgot about the Alice in Wonderland thing with the... Uh, the time has come! Oh, it's time to go to land, or whatever, and then he eats the all of the... the he eats all yeah. of the Oysters. stuff. Oysters, yeah. This is too much. Isn't there anything I can attack at all? I like Disney movies too much. <laughs> Some Disney movies. Oh, yeah. I think we've heard enough. We now know why this bear figurine was at the defendant's mansion as well as who it was that received the bear from the assassin in his room. Everything has become very clear. The client who hired the assassin to commit the murder was Mr. Matt Ongard. I see no reason for this trial to continue, therefore I will now hand down my verdict. Thank you, Your Honor, for your understanding. You see, Mr. Wright, you could not win against the truth, could you? I knew it would turn out this way. After all, what Edgeworth has stated is the truth. Any last objections, Mr. Wright? Well, do I? What should I do? I mean, they said we need to make as much time as possible, so even if we look like an idiot, we should probably object. <laughs> but, because, yeah. like, if we hear the verdict, otherwise what'll happen is we'll hear the verdict, and, like, Gumshoe will come running in, like, da -da 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 -da! We have Maya! And then we're like, yes! <laughs> Verdict! No! Alright, well, we, we gotta to. hear the stupid verdict. Yeah. The defense rests. Phoenix, are you giving up? If you do, Maya will die. What, you forgot? <laughs> How did you forget? And you'll carry that weight on your shoulders every day for the rest of your life. I don't want that to happen to you. Mia. Raise an objection, Phoenix. I will now announce my... <laughs> There's only one way for me to drag this trial out. The only thing I have left is this one dirty trick. What is he gonna do? Your Honor, right now we have these two reasons to believe my client is a client of the Assassin. Reason number one, he accepted the bear figurine from the Assassin. This one dirty trick. Reason number two, that very same figurine was found at Ongard Mansion. However... It's possible this is all the work of a certain other person. What are you saying? What I'm saying is, it's possible a different person is the killer's real client. Poor Miss Andrews. <laughs> He's gonna blame her. The real client? Yes. Is this all you have? Now then, Mr. Wright, let's hear your theory. Who do you say is the real client of the killer, and therefore the real murderer? Well, we have to look at people, not... Yep. It's <laughs> Edward! <laughs> oh my gosh, no. It's a child. Juan Corrin. John Doe hired himself. <laughs> <laughs> it could, it, I think it has to be Adrian. Yeah, but who should, who should we who do should as we... the fake one? Should we do it? It was bad <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> You've let me down, Mr. Wright. Huh? I know you are aware of the truth, and now you are free to turn your eyes from it. But at least try to make some sense while you are doing so. I'll give you another chance, and don't squander it. Yeah. Poor Adrian. She's done, like... I mean, she's done a lot of things wrong. She moved so many things in the crime scene. But otherwise... She's one of the most pitiable characters oh, in the series, I would say. Poor a girl. Adrian Andrews? Yes, we already know that she tried to frame Matt Ongard for the crime. 
by wearing a spare McNichol Samurai costume. Yes, I caught that. Oh! The, the McNichol Samurai's arm that I saw? That could have very well been Miss Andrews. Poor Miss Andrews in the audience. Just like, really? <laughs> but what about Mr. Ongard? If you would please recall yesterday's testimony... The defendant was taking a nap during the break period. That's right. Then, finding this figure at Mr. Ongard's mansion? It was a well-laid trap set by Miss Andrews. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion on this? I can't even begin to count the flaws in the defense's logic, besides which there is no evidence to support it. However, I can't fully discount its possibility either. Hmm. What is with this trial? Come on, anyone can tell Ongard did it. I can't believe the defense would go so far as to pin the guilt on someone else. Yeah, unbelievable. It's not something petty, it's murder of all things. This is to save Maya. This is to save Maya. Even if the whole world turns against me, this is one fight I can't give up on. Order! 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 All disruptive parties will be forced to leave the courtroom. Your Honor, for the benefit of the defense, I'm willing to play along with its what-if game. His what-if game, Mr. Edgeworth? The prosecution is prepared to challenge the defense's theory. Thanks. Mr. Wright, even you must have thought it strange and wondered, why would the criminal want this little wooden bear? He's right. The killer did specially bring that bear to Ongard right away. Why do you ask? Is there something special about it? Absolutely. And I'm sure that once the court knows its significance, the true killer's identity will become crystal clear. Your Honor, the prosecution calls upon a witness who will clear all doubts against Miss Andrews. Herself? And who would that be? It's quite simple, Your Honor. Miss Adrian Andrews herself. Cool. I wanted to talk about her. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're going to have to take a break from the video before we actually hear her testify, <sighs> yeah, because it's a little over half an hour long, so... I see. Well then, the court will take a short ten-minute recess. The prosecution will prepare its witness in that time. Yes, Your Honor. March 23rd, 11.54 a.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby, number three. <laughs> you have more scars than the last time I saw you? No, it's just the wrinkles in his face. Okay, I love how, like, one thing I really like about this design, he's not taking a single sip of that brandy or cognac or whatever it no. is. He literally just has it to swirl it in our face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's great, where he's like, what you gonna do about it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I knew it was a good idea to hold her hostage. Don't you agree, Mr. Lawyer? But I never thought in your desperation you'd try to pin the guilt onto Adrian. I swear this demon will pay. Mr. Nick! P pearls Where's Mia? I... I don't know. A really strong power suddenly called her away. Oh, maybe... A really maybe strong Maya. power? Oh, Mr. Nick, your phone is... It's from Gumshoe. Thank you! How's it going? Have you been hanging in there, pal? Yeah, sort of. We just barely found something to latch onto. Whew! That's good, pal. Oh, what about you? Anything yet? Have you figured out where Tequila and Maya are? Um, uh, we still don't have any leads, but... WHAT?! WE DON'T HAVE ANY MORE TIME! If we just had one, even a single clue would really be helpful. Oh, well, maybe... Okay, I'm guessing Maya's like, Ah, Mia! And then Mia... Yeah, then Pearl goes to Mia, and then Mia goes <laughs> nice, to Phoenix. Nice Jesus pose there. Oh, you yeah, touch down Jesus. <laughs> I was only able to come this far because I kept thinking to myself, I've got to keep this trial going until Maya's been rescued. But have I just run out of luck this time? Is all our hope for naught? A tent! Huh? A tent? I can see a circus tent! Never mind, that was the wrong voice! <laughs> Mia? It looks like Maya was unconscious until just a few minutes ago. As soon as she woke up, she called for me. So it was Maya that called you away? She locked. It, she's locked in a dusty little room right now. But I can see a circus tent outside the window from about 300 feet away. Gumshoe! Is there a circus in town right now? There's only one pal, the Berry Big Circus. Yeah! Maya's somewhere within a 300 feet radius of the main tent. Wh what? Okay, hold on a sec, pal. 
Hey, draw a circle on that map, about 300 feet radius from the main tent. Hurry! And? And? I could see a mailbox under the window. Gumshoe! There's also a mailbox! Hmm, okay, what else? What else, Mia? I'm sorry, but it was a very small window. I, could o I couldn't see anything else. It felt like I was in an old office building. Maybe a third floor or so- Is she- Are- No, wait. That, that would not make any sense. I was like, is she in our office? No, it's an abandoned one, and we're not next to the circus. <laughs> I heard her. An old office building. Good stuff, pal. Okay, just hang in there. Just a little longer, pal. Wish us luck. Good luck. Please speed. I'll call you later, so don't let your battery die, okay, pal? Mia, Maya's not hurt, right? She's in a pretty bad state, Phoenix. She's being starved. Come shoot, please hurry. Looks like we're out of time. Are you alright, Phoenix? It's only a matter of time before Maya's rescued. I can do this. I just have to make this trial last a little longer. Like two hours? <laughs> maybe maybe less than that. March 23rd, 12.03 p.m. District Court, courtroom number I'm three. I'm just trying to imagine how this is going to go um, when we get her back. Like, she's just going to be so starving. We're going to be like, okay, Maya, we're taking you to McDonald's. We're going to get you five burgers. <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> well, McDonald's in Japan, California. We'll go through the drive-thru. They're like, welcome to McDonald's. It's like, oh, this guy is a pig. <laughs> like, he's going to be so Oh, yeah. uh, I right. like two Mc... McHappy Meals, I- McHappy Meals? <laughs> Just Happy Meals, Marty. <laughs> Two Happy Meals. Anyhow, that's it for today, everybody. Thanks for watching. Tune in like next time. Boy Toy, because it'll be a Steel Samurai toy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> boy Toy has also different connotations. Just no, so I know. know. <laughs> but that was what I did when I was little. Yeah. Because I would be like, I want the girl toy. The boy toy can always, like, do cool things or whatever. Oh, I, before we end, I have to say the greatest McDonald's toy we've ever had. It was when The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe was in theaters, and they had, we had a little plastic Aslan figurine. The only thing it could do was open and close its mouth, but we made it lip sync to all the songs on the radio yep. in the car. It was, yep. it was amazing. Anyhow, yep. have a great day and God bless everybody.